Okay. This is my presentation on the history of animation. I'm sure sometimes uh, it was mostly cave paintings and uh, scenes like Venus of Willendorf, which uh, some people believe is a uh, are kind of like uh, self-portraits of uh, made by uh, people of prehistoric times, so that's why the proportions look kind of off. But uh, with cave paints like the Altamira Bison and the one there, that they give off the sense of movement, particularly during uh, particularly under fire. And other. But uh, early motion is uh, the Iran's born city goblet, which is the uh, goat skipping there to get something from a tree. The uh, Kanum uh, Hotep burial chamber mural, which is uh, the events of a wrestling match. And what I think was pretty important was uh, terracotta puppets that came from Greece. And uh, th that, that puppetry in itself it could be a, bit, a 15, 20 minute presentation. Uh, there was also Leonardo da Vinci's uh, Vitruvian Man and the anatomical studies of the muscles of the neck, shoulder, chest and arm. They give a sense of proportion and if you can see uh, Vitruvian Man, diff uh, different forms of motion and also this one here where it looks like the arm is kind of turning. And we go to our, our favorite, the Magic Lantern, which is a oil, an oil lamp projector. And use uh, in, uh, images uh, drawn onto glass frames. These were used in uh, things called Phantasmagorias, which were shown kind of a uh, horror theater uh, back then, and also used by mystics to convince their clients that they can actually contact the dead. There's also the uh, Tomatrope and Flip books, which came around that same time. Uh, the uh, Tomatrope is it's a circular di it's a disc with two holes and a uh, string put to through uh, tr to cause an optical illusion. Along with the <coughs> Flip book, which is uh, different drawings dr uh, drawn on separate pages, and then you flip the pages and causes that motion. There's also a phenakistoscopes, which is a, it's like a disc with loads of slits, with drawings on either side that you spin and look through the slits and you cause the animation in the mirror. An update of that was the zoetrope, which I think are amazing looking things, which are kind of drums with the same principles of a phenakistoscope, but can be seen by multiple uh, people. And here's a... Right, we have the zoetrope. And some nice sort of like that. Pop ones, so. And uh, the next one is an update of the Zoetrope, which is good. Actually, before I go there, the Phanakistoscope, the creator that was uh, Joseph Plateau, who was also the inventor of the first uh, stroboscope, so DJs can thank him as well. The Praxinoscope is <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, the next one up, uh, up for the zoetrope, which is br bring back glass, as that as well, and it's put on a projector, and uh, as you, it's like it was worked with gears and uh, a crank, uh, a crank to uh, for movement. And uh, the inventor of that is Charles uh, Reynaud, uh, for, and he used it for Theatre Optique. And uh, as well as that, this was uh, Theatre Optique, predates uh, Lumiere Brothers by three years, and was the first, technically the first motion picture shown to a live audience. Um, and then we're going into the, the world of contemporary animation which uh, includes 2D, claymation, 3D animation, rotoscoping, and a mixture of uh, other forms. Uh, I chose to use cell animation and stop motion. Uh, cell animation is quite a difficult task, as you can see. It starts with the animatic, which is a film storyboard synchronized to the soundtrack, so it's usually, the director would usually edit within the animatic. 
that would be then sent into the, in between her to uh, clean up uh, missing frames within the animatic. The pencil test clean up and paint department will work on those frames and give them a, a much cleaner flow. And uh, while this is going on, the background painter is also making the backgrounds and the, or the layout artists, as they're known as well. Ink and paints drawn on, transferred from paper to cell. Background cell are placed under the action cells, and you're using the rostral camera, which is basically going to stop motion. It's uh, the, the take a picture of each frame and make your animation move. Uh, these are pretty much this, uh, those steps put into images. Uh, this is and, uh, uh, practitioners are, th this is uh, our Walt Disney creator of Mickey Mouse, Sleeping Beauty, Goofy Donald Duck, and millions of others. Hannah and Barbara, who made that Yogi Bear, Flintstones, Jetson, Scooby Doo, Tex Avery, which is one of my personal favorites in the bunch, who gave us uh, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Droopy, etc., and uh, the non American uh, animators uh, like Hale Miyazaki, who gave us Ponyo, Porco Rose, The Spirit Away, and a great animated film called Grave to Fireflies. Uh, in contemporary animation, 2D animation is now done digitally, and uh, the last two major productions uh, to use cell animation uh, were Ed, Ed and Eddie, which finished up in 2004 for television, and Princess Mononoke, which was 1997 for a motion picture. Now we'll go on to stop motion animation. Which is uh, it's, uh, which also starts uh, work as an animatic. Uh, the animation department on a schedule board. Each animator will go to a board and find the scene they are to animate on that specific day. And uh, while this is going on, the art department are molding the characters of uh, props, sculpting using silicon and wired apertures and use a quick setting resin and leaving it for a day, break the resin open and there's your model. A lot of them use a uh, wireframe uh, uh, for uh, bones and the whistle so you can move it. And legs are usually done with metal rods with ball and socket joints for mobility and stability. And the uh, film is then, uh, sh is used, uh, is then shot. Uh, th you take the, the puppets and uh, slightly move for each frame to give the uh, picture some motion and it's usually 24, 25 frames equal to one second of film. The parts are replaceable and interchangeable so if you want to have eyes closing or uh, speech you can change mouths, eyes or the entire face completely. Uh, yet again there's uh, uh, images for those processes. Uh, my, then there's uh, three practitioners which are Willis O'Brien, King Kong, The Last World, Mighty Joe Young, and The Black Scorpion, all great films. Nick Park, who's uh, creator of Wallace and Gromit, Creature Comforts, Chicken One, and Shaun the Sheep, and my personal favourite, uh, Ray Harryhausen, who gave us Clash of the Titans, Jason and the Argonauts, Beasts of 20,000 Fathoms, Seven Voyage of Sinbad, Sinbad, and was the assistant to Willis O'Brien on Mighty Joe Young. Uh, he created a form of animation known as Dynamation, which is a technique which is a splitting the background and foreground of a live action into two separate images, placing the model in between, using the background as a miniature rear screen. Some of the foreground will be matted out in the black, then photographed, and the film will then rewound and, pre and on the opposite side where uh, there'll be black matting on the, the glass or plastic. What, where uh, the like I would say the image there, you can see that there's like a black mat there, but on that side of things, uh, that will be actually seen. And it's uh, and then you get your image. 
that this is pretty much damnation in its actions. And uh, claymation, stop motion, etc., has done huge for the film industry as a whole. Not just the film industry, also. Which is, uh, you can see with uh, par uh, Paranorman, uh, Sam Raimi's uh, Evil Dead 3 video games like Clay Fighter or uh, Killer Instinct, Robot Chicken, Jurassic Park, Star Wars, uh, name any film with special with large special effects and you could thank people like Willis O'Brien and Ray Harley Housen for those kinds of uh, tricks. And that's it. I just coughed all over myself. <laughs> 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 Just listening on that.